Welcome to Overcome America Hair Loss Summit. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I'm your host, and today I am with a very special guest, Fiorella Castro. She's a hairstylist specializing in bridal and balayage. She's originally from New Jersey, and she found her passion through hair at a later age in her life. She lives, breathes, and eats and sleeps hair. And she, it, she cares about this so much that she does it with so much love. And this is why she's my hairstylist. I thought it was so important to bring her in because working with Grela has literally changed my life. I feel so comfortable going to see her. And I know for us that are going through medical hair loss, working with somebody that you're comfortable with is key. So thank you, Farella, for accepting my invitation. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. So exciting. Okay, so tell us a little bit about you. How did you get into hair? I know this is, you know, your passion now, but like, how did you get into this? So I'm going to make the longest story as short as I can. Um, I was actually in banking before I did hair and the market crashed. And one of my coworkers happened to be going to hair school and we knew that what we were, where we were working was going to close. So she's like, you should come to hair school. And I was like, that's like a really random request, but sure, I'll give it a shot. And I went and I loved it. Um, and I just saw the potential and being able to provide for people. And I think it's important to serve people. So that was just something that for me, I was able to serve and make people feel better about themselves. So I fell in love with it once I started with it. Amazing. And so now that you're speaking about how much you love to serve people i want to ask you because i know you're are now utilizing the instagram platform not only to talk about hair or beauty but you're legitimately trying to you know create a community and influence people to become a better person so what's your vision with that with social media yeah um, you know, I just think in like this day and age of like influencers, just kind of being real and show people like, you know, possibilities and things that you could do with it. You know, it doesn't have to be all just, you know, I, I started off with it just being like pictures of the backs of people's heads, but it got to a point that that's just boring, you know? So for me, I feel like I wanted to resonate with my community. Um, and I feel a huge difference and I feel like people engage with me a lot better when I'm able to tell them my story and my personal experiences where they can actually relate and be like, oh my gosh, I feel you on that. Like, how did you overcome this? Or what did you do with that? You know, that's just that alone with that as well has been like a huge thing for me that people can reach out to me on a platform from another country, you know, that I've never met before and say like, I know what you're talking about. Tell me more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's something that really worked out for me because I felt very, very comfortable from our first appointment. I walked in and I, you know, obviously, and, and we can tell the story in a minute, but I walked in and I like, you know, try to close the blinds and make sure nobody was watching and all the things. But after I left, I really felt like I just get a new friend because you were so down to earth and made me feel comfortable. And like you were really listening to all the things that I was going through. And so I really appreciate that. And I want everybody to go through the same thing. I would like for everybody to experience that. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think we should look for when we're looking for a hairstylist? Because for us, it's not just a haircut. So I think what's really important when you're looking for a hairstylist to take care of you is not to book a service. I think booking a service kind of already lures you into not understanding what kind of person your stylist is and seeing if you guys can connect. I always say that like the consultation is like the first date, right? So, you know, you want to go and meet the person, you want to get to know them, you want to see how they listen to you, if they're listening to you and see if what they're providing as solutions suits your needs as you think that they do. Mm -hmm. So what kind of questions should we ask? Because I wouldn't know, right? Like I'm just walking in, trying to figure out what to do with my hair. What, what should I ask them? Like, how do, how do I get to choose the right stylist for me? So I guess, I mean, of course, with anything, you know, I feel like especially in the hair community, we're always it's a referral based community. So let's say you refer to someone and you book the console with someone, you know, it just depends on 
exactly your scenario. It's pretty much subjective, you know? So let's say like for your case, you know, if you didn't have the smart part, you know, let's say the stylist was somebody who was doing it already, you know, knowing that they were someone to say like, you know, what's your budget? Is it something that you think you'd be able to work with and maintain, you know, understanding what kind of solutions that they can provide for you. So I don't know. I mean, you could probably ask like, you know, what solutions do you think you could provide for me based on what you, what I'm looking for and what I have mm -hmm. and seeing what the stylist can give for you. And if you feel like it's sufficient, then obviously continue. But if not, you know, we're all over the place and there's always somebody for someone. So on to the next one. Yeah. So tell me about what solutions do you provide at your salon right now? Um, so I have a few, so I do carry extensions. So I do offer, um, tape and extensions, which are the only ones that I carry at the time. Um, I feel like they are the less invasive on the hair. Um, they're a lot more gentle to remove. I also offer the smart part. Um, that's actually something that was introduced to me by you. Um, so now that I offer it, it has been something that I absolutely love because just seeing the smile on my guest faces when they receive it is literally like, my assistant and I, we literally get like goosies because we could just see like their face, like this is actually happening. Um, and I also offer, I carry Monet. So their intense repair line has been amazing for um, restoring any hair loss that as far as like anything, like any inactive follicles or anything that they can save or salvage as far as like what's already, what, what you already have to strengthen what you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So let's talk about my smart part because a lot of people ask me about it. Um, so I'm not wearing a wig, A, because I live in Miami and it's super hot and I can't imagine, oh. <laughs> <laughs> can't imagine that. Um, so, I mean, honestly, that's probably reason, main reason. And I haven't lost all my hair. So I still have some bio hair that, and I will show you in a minute. Um, that, that I can, you know, use, I guess, for my look. And this is really light. Um, I get to wear it all the time. I don't have to put it on, put it off. She'll explain the process in a minute. And so I just like how comfortable I am all the time, right? I, I don't, I mean, I get to sleep in it. I get to go in the water. I, it's like pretty much is my hair. Um, and it is because I pay for it. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. You know, it, it just it feels so comfortable. Yeah. Um, so I think um, this is a great solution. I don't know that a lot of people know about it. So um, I'll show you and then she can explain that to you. So if you see like all my sites are the ones that are bad. So this goes up here. Well, it's hard to show. To show. So essentially what the smart part is, is the smart part is pretty much like a small rectangle of a hair piece. And what it does is in that small rectangle, we would put it literally on your part line. Now, mind you, the amount of hair that's on the smart part, it's not overly abundant, which I feel like is great because then it doesn't look fake. It actually flows with the hair beautifully. And so how it works is that around the rectangle, there are about like eight to 10 um, little like inserts that have tape on them. They're medical grade tape. And how it works is I have a little tiny hook and we find the right spot where we want to place it on your head. And then we use a tiny little hook and we actually use some of your hair to hook into in between. So imagine like the sandwich looks like this with your hand. And so we hook hair through the sandwich and there's tape on this side and tape on this side. And so I tighten the hair up a little bit and then I close the sandwich to, to adhere to your natural hair. And so it literally all around like the rectangle are pieces. So it stays tight on your hair. Now that lasts, depending on how fast your hair grows, it can last anywhere between four and six weeks. But honestly, you don't even want to go that far. So I always suggest four weeks is pretty much a max. And I'm sure you can vouch four weeks is probably enough for you. Yeah. And as far as like the, um, the removal, so the removal, we have a solution. We just spray it in and literally it just slips right off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I go see Farrella once a month and pretty much what she does is she removes it. We wash both hairs and then she put them back. 
and then I get to go home and then I get to style my hair and do whatever I want with it. So it's pretty amazing. <laughs> and it's a hundred percent human hair. So you wash it like real yeah. hair, you blow dry it like real hair, you curl it like real hair. It is real hair. Right. So can you tell us about your, cause I you know you have clients uh, also that have had trichotillomania or cancer, not only alopecia. What has been their experience with the smart bar or extensions or like what changes have you seen in like their life, their mood, everything? Cause I'm sure you've seen. Yeah. So I have, I have one client who has alopecia. So she has, a, well, she has something similar to smart bar. It's pretty much essentially the same thing. They have another one called the wonder fill and it's a little bit more on the circular side and it has a little bit more volume to it. It's not as long as the smart part, but for anybody who has like maybe shoulder length hair and they want like voluminous hair, it's a really nice piece to have. Um, so she has the Wonderfill and extensions. And it's so funny because if I could take a video or like just show the face that she takes when like I put everything on after like the whole appointment, she literally is like, she has this like little like selfie face. It's just <laughs> and, like, showing, it's just so cute, like seeing her face and she's so excited. And even her strut. Like when she walks out of the salon, like she is like, she's strutting out the door. Like I'll see you in four weeks. <laughs> she's so confident, like literally confidence out the roof. It's just, it's so beautiful. Um, I also, I have, I have another girl. Um, she's a little girl who has trichotillomania and hers is really intense. Um, she pulls everywhere. I mean, eyelashes, eyebrows, just everywhere. And so, um, for an event, we were able to put on, I actually customized the smart part a little bit for her. I probably, it's not advisable, but just because her, she has, she's so young and she, her head was so tiny. I cut some of it just to fit her head for the event. Um, and luckily her hair was long, just long enough just for that day. But even just for that day, was able to provide her like confidence to like go to the event that she needed to go to, mm. which was nice. So, you know, Sometimes you just have to think outside the box, but at the end of the day, like we have to be realistic, right? So me, especially like learning, you know, having you in my chair, like I've had to learn a little bit more so I can understand and provide correctly. And for me, understanding that like hair loss is biological, like I physically cannot give you anything that's like, I have to understand what's happening on the inside so that I can provide something for you on the outside. And if you feel like that somebody doesn't understand what you're going through or understand the like technical the technicality of it, then you have to find someone who has knowledge because it can, it can harm you more. You know what I mean? So like there are other kinds of extension lines that I can carry, but they're so heavy on the hair that like I could never imagine putting them on your hair because it's so fragile. So for me, I love tape ins. I love tape in general because it's so gentle and even the removal is way more gentle. So just, having that experience has actually, I want to say humbled me to like care even more so for no matter whose hair it is to be more gentle on their hair and know like, actually, no, that can hurt your hair. It looks great in the, in the short term, but in the long term, like it can actually hurt you. So mm -hmm. that has pretty much been my experience with, you know, understanding like the medical hair loss community. Right. And so for instance, for this, um, for this matter part and the extensions, what kind of care do we need to have? Because that's another thing that even we have to learn is how do we take care of this? So how do you take care of it? So number one, obviously when you're brushing, no matter who the extension client is and no matter where your extension starts. So whether you have tapins that the tapins are pretty much, um, they're like two pieces. I also call them like a sandwich and they're about like, probably like about like an inch and a half to three inches long and they sandwich some of your hair in between, and they all go pretty much in this area around. So whether your extensions are here on top of your head, you always wanna hold on to it, because obviously when you're pulling, you're being aggressive and you're causing tension, and the last thing your hair needs is tension. Um, so I always say you wanna hold tight and brush so that you know that like if it's pulling, like your hand is holding you back. Um, also too, like if you need to put um, like any kind of detangler to help detangle the hair so you're not ripping through it. That's super important. And also maintenance. Maintenance is super important. You do not want to neglect maintenance. Um, just because of the fact that it can mat up in between if you go too long because the hair starts to loosen and then the hair itself starts to mat up in between. 
And that's the last thing you want because your hair is so gentle to begin with that if it mats up, I have to be really abrasive and breaking it apart. So maintenance, they care for it as, well, as far as physical care for it. And then using like a styling or a heat protectant that's going to protect your and the hair that you've invested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wanted to share about uh, a recent experience that I had at Fearless Studio. So as you know, um, alopecia is cyclical, right? Like we never know where we're at. Like, are we losing our hair? Are we, is it growing back? Because I'm sure some of you have experienced that it comes back and then it falls again and then it goes back and then you just never know. But we have those moments of, oh my God, it's back. And like, you know, what's happening. And I had one of those moments um, in December, I think, where I went to get my visa adjusted and we take it off and I see all this regrowth. So, like it looked like my hair was growing back and we're all in tears. And um, I don't know, it's just so exciting to see that it's, you know, my first thought is, oh my God, I'm healing myself and all the things. So, um, it was beautiful and I went home and I was excited and um, yeah, I just got to to not wear anything but my hair for a minute. And that night I remember very I was like, okay, like this is amazing. You know, like we, we could all see it, that there was a change. But what I like is that you said, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, give me a call. If you need to put your hair back, give me a call. Like, I'll be there. Like, I, I respect the fact you want to do this right now, but if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to do it forever. This is not the forever thing. You know, you can, you get to do whatever you want. And so I went home, and so first night it was fine. Second day, I wake up to realizing that my hair is not what it wanted to be, right? Like, yes, it grew back, and I had some growth, and that's awesome, but it's not enough for me to feel comfortable going out or living my life like that every day. Um, especially I work out every day. So imagine like the three hairs that I have sweating and, and, you know, it's like, no. And another thing that for me is it's quality of life. And this allows me to wake up in the morning and go, I'm ready. Um, I don't have to think about doing all the things, the styling, the, the color, the pigments, the, you know, all the stuff that we usually have to do if we don't have hair, we're not wearing hair. So, um, what I, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I really got with, through that experience that it's a choice. So this time I'm wearing my hair because I choose to, because I want to, um, have a better quality of life because I want to be ready on the fly because um, I don't want to deal with it, but it's my choice. I'm not hiding. And so I think that's what's so important when you're, um, you know, when you're choosing to wear hair is ask yourself, like, why are you doing this? Why, uh, why are you wearing this hair? Are you wearing because you're hiding? Are you wearing because you want to be comfortable? Um, and like, you know, try to get to a point where this becomes a choice and not your way out. Because even if you don't think that you're, it's affecting you, like subconsciously, you are hiding. And that doesn't allow you to be open with people. It didn't allow me to be open with people. Because I was always thinking, oh my God, can they tell? What are they thinking? Are they watching? Can, do they know? Can they see it? And like all my conversations as I'm having conversations, I'm having these thoughts of, I need to distract them. Let me change the subject. And, you know, so my invitation is that if you are going to wear hair, if you are going to wear extensions or the smart part or a wig, whatever it is, do it by choice, not because you're hiding. So, yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Well, you know, and it's funny because the, okay, so I was in a, so when you, there was one day you came in and like, you just had that, like, I don't care anymore attitude. And I remember like from that day forward, like, I feel like, and personally, like I'll even, I will 
tell this to any single person. Stress is so awful for your hair. I have a client who she went to law school in New Orleans and every now and then she would come visit and she had a ponytail this thick, like her hair was so thick. And I remember at the end of her college career, she came to visit and her ponytail was like this thin. And I was like, what happened to your hair? And she was like, school is so stressful. My hair is falling out in clumps just from the stress. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know what to do. And I was like, girl, like you need to lose like you need to go do yoga, do meditation, like do something like you need to take care of you because stress is so bad on your hair. So understanding how impactful stress can be on your hair in a negative way is something that I feel like a lot of people, especially with medical hair loss, need to be cognizant of because I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with both. And even seeing your hair improve when you decided to not care anymore, like you can almost see the difference. Like when you just literally were like, I'm done, I don't care anymore, your hair started to improve by mountains. And I think that that's even a factor too, because we, uh, we relate to beauty with hair, but in reality, like it's not like you have solutions, whether it's a wig, a smart part, whatever the case is, like you can rock your hair and do whatever you want. It's just however you want to feel comfortable with whatever it is, but just removing the stress from it because that's just internal and you don't need that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and on that same you know, what you're saying is, I think also that we need to lower the expectations of I'm going to put on extensions or the smart board or a wig and it's over. I'm going to be happy because you're not. So I think that overcoming hair loss or living with hair loss, really, because you're living with it and it's not, you know, for some of us, it's not going to go away. It's something that you're going to have to live with forever. So you have to have a holistic approach literally so it's like you get to wear the hair you get to take care of your mental health which i know it's it's really hard for a lot of us so you know there's a lot of work to do and it's a daily practice it's not i'm gonna go buy some hair and then i'm gonna be happy forever no like you have to work on this every day um yeah because we all have bad days you know like i had a bad day the next day that i had removed the hair i was so sad but you also have to feel your feelings you know you can't just pretend that it's not happening you know it's happening but like be with it and love it love yourself anyway right like yes you might not have best most beautiful hair but like you get to love yourself anyway because you are not your hair right like there is your hair and there is your soul your being your you know everything so Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share about, you know, working with people with hair loss? What has been your experience? Um, honestly, it has been, like I said earlier, like, it's just something that ever since meeting you, it has kind of opened my eyes to having more empathy and understanding because like you said, like, you know, people will come in and they'll hide behind what they're going through and they're not as vulnerable. And luckily, like you and I have that vulnerability to speak to each other the way they do. So I've been open up more to understanding like what they're probably going through and being able to show empathy and saying like, I'm here for you. And if there's any solutions I can provide for you, like let's find them and figure it out. Right. So also I had the opportunity to interview Jeffrey Paul from Wigs for Kids. Uh, today. And um, I know that part of what he requested um, to help for, you know, kids that need a wig is he requested for donations. Um, So tell us how does that work? For people that don't know how that works, if somebody wants to donate their hair, what do they have to do? Okay. So you have to obviously go to a salon that will understand the rules. And if they don't understand the rules, please understand the rules for yourself. You can always go to the website, which I believe is fixforkids.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'll have the rules there. Um, of course, I always confuse it. I feel like it's gotten longer over the years, but I believe it's 12 inches. Um, so you have to understand, okay, so if someone's going to donate their hair, you have to understand where your hair is going to go to. So understand like if you're going to donate 12 inches 12 inches is going to be from the bottom all the way up to 12 inches and maybe even an inch above and an inch below because we need to tie it i actually think i learned today and i please go on the website and double check but i think i learned today that he said 
we need four inches ex extra from what you want to give because most children wear a ponytail. So those four inches are going to go away. Um, so maybe if it's 12, donate 16. If you want to donate, I don't know. I don't know what the sizes are. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, usually it's about 10 and up. Um, so if you're expecting it to be like, if it says 10, go to 14. If it's 12, go to 16 for sure. Um, and the hair has to be clean. It, ha it cannot be wet and um they'll give you the address where to send it and then you go from there it cannot be color treated if i'm correct yeah. it That's has to be natural non-color treated mm -hmm. yeah. all right well thank you Fiorella, so much i also know that you're super generous and have a gift for the audience yes yeah. So if anybody comes in, um, of course, I would love to meet you first. If you come in for your consultation and all goes well, when you come for your first paid visit um, for your experience with Valerie, I will be giving you 10% off with the coupon code Valerie810. Thank you so much. And I of know course. I can tell you that working with Varela has truly made a difference. And my wish for you is that you find somebody that can understand you, that can listen to you, that, that looks at you you know, as a person that that is going through something difficult with their hair, because I know how hard it is to go to the hair stylist. For me, it was terrifying. It was really terrifying. And and so I think the relationship that you have with your stylist is so important when you're going through this, that, you know, I hope that today's interview was helpful, that, you know, now you know where to go, now you know what to ask, and that you get to find a special person like that online. So thank you, Fiorella. <laughs> thank you for having me. Of course.